Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a board that I've been wanting to take a look at for a minute and a lot of people have asked me about this board. Um, I know there's some reviews out there but I continue to receive a lot of positive messages uh, from subscribers, viewers of my videos and they thank me for uh, being honest and answering questions that they didn't even know they had. So I want to continue doing that. So if there's anything that you guys want to want for me to add to my videos as far as capturing any of the technical information or anything else, um, I'm still creating my format. I'm still working on, you know, having a schedule and I'm still working on my new studio space as right now I'm kind of in a storage closet, but it works for what I need it to. So anyway, Today, I am taking a look at this very interesting keyboard from Skyloom. Now, anyone who's been in the hobby for any amount of time is likely to have a Skyloom keyboard in their collection. I know, I certainly do. Um, the GK75, the GK61. Um, I, I, I got a, at least a couple of the GK61s, and I believe I've got a 65 too. I don't know, I'd have to look, take a look. But, Skyloon has always been reliable, though not groundbreaking. But in this one, I mean, I can honestly say I don't know of any other keyboard that has the features that this one does. So, if you've been paying attention over the last couple of years, knobs have become a great feature. So many keyboards, especially 75% with knobs, and now 65% with knobs, are becoming quite popular. I personally love knobs because it allows me to quickly, if nothing else, if I don't have it programmed, I know it's gonna at least be stock for sound. And I tend to play my music or TV very loud when I'm concentrating. It allows me to, I don't know, focus my upper brain on something that I've already heard, or I've already you know seen so that I can focus my primary um, bandwidth, I guess you could say, on the task at hand. So being able to, especially when someone walks into my office, to just you know either turn it down if it's not too loud or just quickly press it, whether it's a phone call, somebody coming in, um, you know, it's time for me to leave for an appointment, whatever, I can just hit it and it's the simplest thing. Yes, I know you can program keys and you know, heck, you could probably, you know, if you didn't want to use your navigation keys, have mute, volume up, volume down. But a lot of us, we want to use as many of our keys as possible, and especially with different layers. Now, Skyloom software has never been known to be groundbreaking, but I'm going to take a look at, at this software and see if there's anything new. Um, but again, this one has hot swappable knobs which is completely new to me. Now I've taken it out of the box just to take a look at it, make sure that it arrived in one piece. And I'm honestly surprised. Um, I've got to say all the Skyloom boards, I think that I have previously purchased were all bare bone. So, but even then they all require a little bit of tuning to get to a good state. And I guess that's probably why I have a bit of a fondness for them because, um, they were always reliable. I haven't had a Skyloom board die yet. Knock on wood, or knock on wood below my uh, <laughs> my mat. But they always, I mean, you just knew what you were getting. And they have been around in the game for some time. So let's see where they're at today. Now this board does seem to be generating some interest and when I pulled this out to make sure it was okay, not only did my wife go, ooh, what's that? And she, I mean, it has to be a standout board for her to actually notice it. I mean, because she, I mean, she uses a keyboard, but she's she loves 60%, you know, and no frills, no chills. Um, 
she actually just uses a Z11, a Yusu one that I modded, and and it's um, it's got botanical caps on it, uh, XDA I believe, and she just loves it. She, I mean, she doesn't spend much time on the computer, but when she does, she prefers using that over anything else. But she's just not. I mean, she might be like, oh, every once in a while, like with the Halo series, she was like, that's different. And I was like, yeah, this one's definitely different. Because I think, and I hate to keep bringing this up, but Halo really did, uh, I should say Nufi, really did something with the Halo series. Um, they took, you know, three known standard layouts, 65, 75, 96, and they created something new while still sticking to, you know, an existing methodology or, or principles, I should say, because their keyboards are well built. They have a really unique RGB design. They have a really cool space bar. I mean, yes, I know we can add a little bit of foam to our space bars, but even then I don't think it sounds quite as good as a um, one of their ghost bars. I think that's what they call it, sounds like. And their keyboard just sounds super clean stock. I mean, it's one of the few boards that even enthusiasts, I think, will be able to just pull out of the box and get to work. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love modding keyboards and I am going to mod each of the Halo keyboards, uh, applying different types of mods to them. But I just think they bring something new. And I think that's what we've got here is something, you know, we're, they're sticking to a particular layout yet they're adding something new so let's go without any further ado apologize for my i know i tend to go off on tangents and um i, I get a lot of people that say they appreciate it so uh but if you guys want me to cut down on them some more and stay focused just let me know truly you guys help decide what content i'm going to deliver and what information you know i'm going to take notice of it so i can share with you guys because my intent, and I'm not copying Hippio here, is I am buying it so you don't have to, and you can figure out if it's something that you would like to buy. I'll never tell you to buy it or not to buy it, but I will give you the reasons why I personally would or would not buy a particular product. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the Skyloom GK75 with hot swappable knobs. Just to clarify, there is a GK75 out there that is optical. I'm not sure of all the differences between it. Skyloon has always, uh, like for the GK87, there's an XS or X or S, and they have them modeled the same name. I mean, the case and everything else is the same, but the PCB is optical only. Now, I personally would not recommend an optical keyboard to anyone, newcomers or people that have been in a hobby forever because of your limited choice of switches. Most of us prefer to get hot swap. I mean, I have a couple of solder boards, but hot swap allows me to go, ooh, I like this switch. I wonder what it will sound in that keyboard. And you know, I'm not gonna have to sit down and take a couple of hours out of my time, my day, to have to unswatter, unsolder and resolder you know, switches onto a keyboard and then to go find, I don't really like how they sound or they feel on that keyboard. So having that hot swap uh, socket is very important. Um, we have Skyland has always been known to have their um, basically just a user hander, uh, user guide that's that's handy. It shows you all the keyboard shortcuts. Now with this one, it also tells you the standard knob functions. So it looks like okay. So it has six pieces that can be replaced knobs or one knob by default, but apparently, okay, so it has a, looks like it has a built-in zoom in and zoom out as well as volume. I don't know if that's started with the uh, function key or not, but I'm sure we will figure it out. So yeah, we have it uh, GK75 RGB USB, and it's also a three mode keyboard. Um, all right. Well, it looks like we've got a few features here and we will go over that. Let's see what else we've got. All right, we've got a couple of extra keys. I don't know what this uh, keycap set is called, but my wife really liked it. And I mean, I don't dislike it. It's just not something I guess I would pick on my own. 
But we've got a couple of extra novelty keys here. Let's go ahead and set these aside. Oh, another novelty key. All right, I'm gonna guess they're different heights. Uh, are these OEM or are these cherry? All right, we got your standard uh, key cap puller. Oh. What is this? Hmm. Huh. There seems to be screws in here. All right, that might be extra screws. I'm gonna go ahead and stick you back in here in this box, because I'm sure we're gonna come back to you. All right, here's our USB-C cable, USB-A to USB-C. I'm not a big fan of cables that are molded specifically to fit into just that keyboard. I should be able to use it with anything. Um, but it includes a decent nylon braided cable. So these screws, don't know what they are, but I'm just gonna stick you guys over here for right now until I figure out what you're for. Now, as with many Skyloom boards, we also have the option to do a split space bar. Uh, a lot of folks love the split space bar, whether you use one for backspace or function and the other one for space. But having the ability to take take your your uh, space bar and turn it to two or three switch through two or three keys instead of just one long one, since the space bar is the most space inefficient key on a keyboard, um, this is a pretty cool, good option. And like I said, many of the Skyloom boards have that option. Now we also have, oh, a USB-A to USB-C converter. And this, what is this? Ooh. Oh, we got a couple extra switches. So it looks like, I think these are the Sky Sign. Oh, that's a decent linear. Looks like it's got probably a 3.8 travel. Yeah, these are Skyloom switches, and I think that's what we have loaded up. And what else do we have here? All right. I was under the impression this came with more knobs. Oh, there we go. They're just hiding. All right, so we have this, which seems to be... Oh. So this is how the switch goes. So basically, the hot swap knob appears to be a switch, but with two extra, seem to be pogo pins almost. So I'm gonna guess there's two extra pads on there. Well, let's see how this is gonna work. But that appears to go like that, and that goes on there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So that's interesting. Now. We do have a total of four knobs, but only one extra knob switch. I don't know if that's what you'd call it. Screws. All right. So for right now, let me just go ahead and take one of these out since I'm not exactly sure what's going on yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. No, uh, I do apologize. Um, I don't think I mentioned it, but uh, I did reach out to Skyloom. Uh, I could not find it. Uh, it was out of stock on Amazon, and there was another listing not by Skyloom that was the optical board. So obviously I didn't want to take a look at that one. So I reached out to them and asked them if I could review this one. And they were very uh, helpful. They sent out this unit uh, in exchange for my honest review. As always, my opinions are my own, all right? I'm, I'm always going to be honest, even if it's, you know, detrimental, you know, or kind of sours a relationship between me and a vendor because I'm just not going to, I'm not going to lie for any amount of money. I just don't feel that it's right. And uh, if I'm lying, then what's the point of me making video? Again, this was sent out to me for my honest review. So taking a look at this, it's actually a quite hefty build. Ah, and we've got a difference because um, a lot of their... Uh, 
I'm gonna say the TKLs always had the uh, cutout in the middle. I've seen the case uh, made so many times that way to where it has the, uh, this would be over here. And then we still have the channels. Now here we actually have a nice little pocket for the USB 2.4 dongle, which I mean, if you're putting out a keyboard with 2.4, you gotta design a place to store it on the keyboard uh, and it should be a safe spot now I have seen others put it right here underneath the foot so you have to actually lift one of the feet to pull it out I think that's one of the best implementations um, so we have switches for both USB Bluetooth a 2.4 as well as a Windows and a Mac switch which honestly I think they all should be physical switches if possible um, when doing key combinations, a lot of people either get it stock and plug it in, you know, and it's stock Mac and they plug it into a Windows or vice versa and they're just like, hey, the keyboard doesn't work. So having that switch is an instant way to go, oh, that's why. So I think um, it'll eliminate a lot of issues if they have that, that switch. Now we do have two pairs of feet and we have oh, some nice, uh, nice actual rubber pads. They seem a little softer than I'm used to. And so we got three different typing angles here. And we also see got a couple of screws here, which I'm not doing any opening today. We're just gonna take a look at it and do a stock sound test, but I guarantee you I'll be coming back to it. Though I'm actually quite surprised. Again, all of my Skyloom boards in the past have been bare bone. This was the first one that I can recall that comes preloaded or pre-built. But when I started typing on it, I was honestly impressed at how well it sounds. I mean, it is, don't get me wrong, it's muted and it doesn't like deliver a specific, you know, tone, but pre-built, it it's, it's up there. And as far as pre-builds go, unfortunately, too many pre-builds. Um, even uh, I've seen too many, and I've I've actually reviewed a few over the last couple of weeks. That I mean, they come fully loaded. They're well padded, you know, dampened, but they include switches that are not lubed or that are super super pingy to begin with. And it's just like, why? Why did you do that? So anyway, we've got the knob. So I was on the impression we had six knobs that came with this but that does not seem to be the case so we have six knob tops but we only have two of these so let's go ahead and pull this out nope. all right doesn't want to come out all right that was a little harder than I would have liked, but that's fine. All right, so there we see those two extra contact points. So where, oh, this doesn't even go into the switch slots. This just touches those four, or yeah, those four pads that you guys can see right, right next to the LED. So those are the contact points to handle the press as well as the turn. Now that mechanism for the turn is actually inset into this, I don't know if I call this a switch or just a hot swap knob, but when you put it on, then it turns, you can feel the clicks at every station and you can press it in. All right, so we have the ability for two switches now and how many places can we put this? From what I understand, I believe we have this column, yep, and I think we have the F12 can also be, oh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like these keys, they're quite colorful, but I'm not sure what the theme is. See, all right, yeah, and then the escape key.
All right. So it looks like these are all the spots that we can um, go down this column, these two spots, and this spot. Now I'm still trying to understand why there's only one extra of these. I got six knob tops. Oh, okay, yeah, here it actually does show the positions, but why do I only have two of these, two, two switch knobs, but I actually got six tops. I don't know the answer to that question. All right, so for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back in. Looks like it goes this way. And then you pop the top knob on. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick one over here where the escape belongs. It goes in fairly well. Um, I don't think you have to worry about any uh, switches, pins getting getting bent. Now, that's one thing that I, I do want to note. A lot of folks, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love to hot swap just like the next guy. But a lot of these uh, switches, they sometimes come with very soft legs. And if you're not careful they're gonna bend and after bending several times they will break so the tolerances on all the hot swap sockets are just you know a little different so I cannot stress enough one must be real careful when exchanging hot swap sockets not only to prevent breaking the hot swap socket off of the PCB but also to prevent damaging your legs if they get bent Yes, it's okay if they get bent once, but multiple times, that metal is pretty fragile, pretty thin. It can eventually just snap, and then there goes that switch. So anyway, we're taking a look at this keycap set, and I, I just honestly, I'm not sure what to make of it, but it is quite colorful. Like I said, my wife definitely loved it, so, and she has much better taste than I do, so I'm going to defer to her on that. Let's take a look at what we got here with the stabilizers. I'm pull this switch out. And let's see what these stabilizers look like. All right, so they are lubricated. And these are decent stabilizers. At least they're not the milky ones. I do like the black and white color. And see, because they're north facing, they are facing down. And when we lock them into place, how well do they sit on the plate? No, oh, they are actually very tight on the plate. So tolerances seem to be quite good here. All right, these are Skyloon glaciers, but they're not the silent. They're just a regular linear. All right, I did get a dual knobs version. This one's called the Memphis, and it seems to come with mechanical silver, or, eh, that's not white, that's closer to a silver. All right, so this has what's called a light gasket, but, I mean, There's no flux that I can feel in here. So, but we'll get into that uh, once I once I open her up and I'm gonna mod it. So, this keyboard retails for anywhere between eighty and ninety dollars, from what I've seen. I don't know if there's one that comes with more knobs. This one just says the dual knob version. I do. I like knobs and I use them. So. This keycap set, though, five side sound absorbing two in one, end case phone and bottom case. Knob, okay, that's called the knob module, the, the knob switch. And it has six piece switches can replace. See, that's the thing. It gives me the impression that it's going to come with six knobs. But I'm, I got to believe that one of those isn't going to be um, to buy one isn't going to be too expensive. Oh no, these are OEM. I am wrong. I'm having trouble distinguishing between <laughs> OEM and uh, Cherry lately. I 
I don't use really either one of them as my daily. Um, I'm more particular to SA, ASA, or MT3, or going the entire different direction, um, XDA. <laughs> Though, XDA, don't get me wrong, I like it, but it takes me a minute to get back used to them. All right, so it says box switch core, but this isn't a box switch. This is a dust proof switch. It has a dust proof style stem. A box switch is what uh, Kale does, like with the creams. And I got one right here. My random collection of switches. Oh, come on. Of course, it's going to be one of the last ones out. Yes, I just have a collection of random switches. And now it doesn't fit. Yeah, we'll have to fix that in a minute. Anyway, this is a box switch. A box switch means that it has a different mechanism for actuation on the inside. So, and this is a dust proof stem. So, now, while some of these might have the squarish dust proof, dust proof stems as well, it doesn't make other ones that have them box style switches. This is a regular MX switch with a dust proof stem. And that just means that it's going to prevent a lot of the dust from getting into the mechanisms inside. So, let's see. Let's take a look at RGB on this lovely keyboard. I, I do, I actually kind of like the colors, I gotta say. All right, ooh. So we have a, a decently bright LED here. It looks quite nice. Let's see what it looks like without a switch. I gotta say, I like the tolerances on the plate. It's not fighting me. Unfortunately though, we are dealing with a steel plate. I honestly, I'm curious as to what it would cost manufacturers to not only have an option, but actually just include polycarbonate plates right off the bat. Um, steel plates, they're heavier. They've got to be more expensive than polycarbonate. I, I got to believe, but apparently they're the cheaper. Um, but you're always going to have an issue with possible ping when you have a keyboard like this. So let's just see what we've got. Now we definitely looks like we have a pretty thick silicone between the plate and the PCB. Oh, it looks like we have an open cell phone down below. Now this keyboard has three way or three mode. So what size battery are we dealing with? So the Glacier Mechanical Silver, it's linear with a 48 to 52 gram force, a pre-travel of one, 1.5 millimeters, travel distance 3.8, I was right, and a lifetime of 50 million. Super for gaming. Now, I mean, it's nice, but I don't know what it is about Octo Silvers. There are, they just, I mean, these are the Aqua Silvers in a um, drop alt. Uh, not that these silvers are bad, just doing a quick comparison. So. It doesn't even have the size of the battery in the back. Now, why manufacturers don't include this information, honestly, is beyond me. Now, the optical version retails for $59.99 on Amazon, and that's not the one that I want to get. Well, it tells me it has PBT keycaps. Okay. I had to actually go look for a review to find what size the battery is. It's a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. All right. 
really that that kind of stuff needs to be included in the marketing i mean even on their own website it does not show what size the battery is now 4000 milliamp hours depending i mean if you've got your rgb turned on or off off you should at least be able to get two weeks from it on you might be able to get work sweet work week worth like about you know four to five days using it every day now i personally i very rarely use wireless i have a uh, a jazz that's connected to my android tv and when i do go on the road let's say i take wireless keyboards with me but i usually end up using a short usb cable and just placing it on top um, of the keyboard of the keyboard on top of the lap on the keyboard on the laptop i end up placing the keyboard on top of the laptop's keyboard and just leave it plugged in because the last thing i personally want is to all of a sudden you know be working on something not have a cable and the battery goes dead so that's you know and, and i mean to plug it in you can charge it so might as well just leave it plugged in i I know a lot of people need wireless and prefer to have wireless. I just wish we had options for every keyboard. Like, hey, I, I want wireless. All right, this is what you pay. I don't want wireless. So take away the battery, you know, and maybe even use a different PCB that is going to be cheaper since it doesn't have the uh, Bluetooth and the 2.4. I think that just needs to be more. I, I understand some people like the... Um, like to have the option of wireless but i just think that there needs to be more option when purchasing that's all now let's see what about the effects we've got here so we've got function nine and i'm going to think this one's yeah. function nine turns the backlight on and off function zero light effect pause or play All right, function minus are one through five backlight effects. And then function plus is six through nine. Now I prefer single colors. What about changing the single color? Now, now that I can see it does not appear to have a change the single color. So we'll have to take a look at the software, which I will here momentarily. Now, one thing I do want to see, I've been checking on keyboards, is will it charge while it's in wireless mode? So let's go ahead, unplug it, put it into Bluetooth mode. Let's pair it. GK75XSKB. All right, looks like we're in pairing mode. Let's try this again. All right, so as we're connected, that uh, appears so. All right, so what happens if we plug it in while we're in the wireless mode? When I plugged it in, my USB hub just said no more. I have quite a few devices plugged into just two USB ports on this laptop. I do need to... Um, build me a workstation for this i just haven't gotten around to it yet so i do apologize anyway um i did take a look at the software and it is still the i had i don't know i'd forgotten it maybe it's just uh my mind wanted to shut it out skyloom uses an all-in-one although kidos does too but kidos of software is it's more intuitive um, Skylunks has become even more cumbersome, but it does have the ability. I, you know, I trudged my way through it. Um, I feel that there's enough content to actually just make an entire separate video on how to use Skyloom. It's, it's not very intuitive and they have, you know, layer, layer zero, I think, or layer one. And then layer two is Mac. And the first one is Windows, and then you have Layer 3, and then you have Driver, and you have to be in the Driver tab in order to do the 
RGB per key if you want to set that up. But there's a whole lighting tab for creating you know, your own effects, um, which I think can be bound in there. I, I don't know. It, it didn't, it wasn't intuitive. And coming from someone who wrote software for the last three decades, wow, yeah, the last three decades, um, it's just not. It's not user friendly. It's it's not clear how certain things are done, and it's just it, it needs to be just scrapped, you know. And I hope they at least wrote the function separate from the interface, and the interface needs to be designed from a top down view, connecting to the back end or the API or whatever the like I said hopefully the logic is separated and not part of the UA because that it is then I can see why it's gotten more cumbersome but anyway I'm going down a whole side path uh, it does not appear because uh, this one does have the um, function for yeah. um, it it does not seem to charge or at least the indicator light doesn't come on if I'm in a wireless mode and I plug it in. I don't know wireless mode right now. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, never mind. Oh, it is. So, where am I in a wireless mode? Let me make sure. No. Oh, it's connected over. So I'm gonna assume that it has Bluetooth 5.0 because once it connected through Bluetooth, it showed me the uh, battery level of the uh, keyboard, which is a feature. I mean, not only does m most 5.0 implementations and higher include B BLE, which is Bluetooth low energy. So um, not only, and it's just regular process, because I mean, Bluetooth, if you understand how the protocol works, I mean, let's just say, it's talking it, it, it it's very it does a lot of transmissions and bluetooth le slows those down and actually i mean it's also used in hardware that sips on just you know micro milliamps of um milliamps of power especially you know when it's not being used like this one it'll turn its lights off but you can set the time but it also reports current battery status you know capacity and what basically if you're full or not so um most operating systems i'm pretty sure windows does it um i don't know if that's a setting that you'd have to set i know that i'm in uh running gnome yeah this is running gnome uh i'm running arch and it just shows automatically it doesn't seem when i pair it with my buds shows me how much battery power i have in each Anyway, so the software, it allows you to do it, you know, to, to remap keys and also has more than just one layer. But I think one is specific to the Mac switch and one is specific to the Windows switch. And I think that's how they implement it. Like I said, I don't remember. It's been a while since I even installed Skyloom software. Um, but it, it's the same, it's all in one. Because I plugged in two of my older uh, Skyling boards and it detected them. It was, you know, the same interface. So, these, uh, these switches, the dampening that it includes, it's definitely, I, I hands down, I've got to say the best Skyling keyboard that I've, I've seen. Um, taking a look at it, the... Uh, Usually the bottom case is a good giveaway of, you know, this is a another label of X keyboard because there are a lot. Uh, I mean, the Fecker 75, uh, one of the most, I believe one of the most, 75% with knobs that has been um, copied out there. I've seen it under so many different brands. So this is one that I haven't seen before. 
so which is a nice refreshing thing i mean it's got three i wish they would have had four keys but no big deal it allows me to program so i can you know i might have to do an extra click here or there no problem but the the knobs i gotta say is cool i i i just kind of like this because <laughs> um um yeah because with the two knobs it really does remind me of an extra sketch so it's like what can i do with these um so i look forward to coming up with an interesting setup because i mean don't get me wrong i i like oleds but that's more aesthetics it's cool so that's why the nj 68s become one of my favorite 65 percent that i that i have uh, because it has both a knob and a screen. I never really thought of multiple knobs on a keyboard, but I just recently reviewed um, the Megalodon 30. So it, it's a 30 key macro pad and also comes with uh, two potentiator me you know, knobs where you can turn them and press and one big like volume uh, rocker, I guess. I don't know. Look that big round one. It's usually the first time I remember seeing them is like on Marant stereo systems when I was a kid. Um, the volume knob, or actually sometimes it was a tuning knob. But anyway, I know it has a particular name. But two knobs on a single keyboard for me is a is quite an interesting proposition. Um, I could use you know one to zoom or scrub, you know, especially if I tie it in with function um, so there's there's stuff I could do now would I rather this keyboard had MK5 absolutely let's get technical today we are taking a look at the Skyloom GK 75 it is a three mode 75 percent that comes with six hot swappable spots and two hot swappable knobs it weighs in at 1,062 grams. The battery is 4,000 milliamp hours. It is loaded with Bluetooth 5.0 and reports battery status to device it's connected to. It is built on a light gasket system. And this keyboard in particular is their Memphis edition, which comes with OEM PBT die sub keycaps and Skyloom Glacier linear switch. This keyboard manufacturer retails for $89.99. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters while the back sits at 32 millimeters providing for a 7 degree typing angle. Using the first set of feet you will raise the height to 40 millimeters providing you an angle of 10 degrees. Using the last and final set of feet, you will raise the back to 46 millimeters with a typing angle of 12 degrees. All right, so today we took a look at the Skyloom GK75, a 75% free mode keyboard that includes Bluetooth 5.0 and knobs. I mean, six slots. So here, basically the escape key, the F12 key, and this entire column. So you can put now it does only come with two knobs. Well, let me put that correctly. There's two parts to the knob, or three parts, as you see. You have the basically the filler or the badge. Uh, it's a rubber part that wraps around, and then <clears throat> all right. So you pull this off, and then you pull this rubber piece out, and then you have the switch. All right. So we can see that in that switch position, not only do we, do we have the spots for the five pin, three to five pin hot swaps, but we have four pads up at the top, right? Two on either side of the LED. And that's where these are connecting to. So it makes it a dual purpose hot swap socket, which it's the first I've seen. I don't know if anyone else has done this, but it's definitely the first one that I've seen, and I think it's a pretty cool implementation. Excuse me. I mean, I can always make that a press escape, but the fact that I add two more functions or two more ways to input, um, 
makes it more valuable to me. Also, uh, like I believe I already mentioned, this is for me definitely the um, the nicest Skyloom that I've seen. Uh, but all of the Skyloons that I've had. No, actually, let me take that back. The GK87. That one, yeah, that one came with um with optical reds and uh, I think they were Gateron and um, shine throughs and there were just the, the cheap plastic PBT uh, double shot shine throughs so yeah and it had absolutely no dampening but this is before uh, keyboards in this price range uh, included any you know little to any if at all uh, dampening so I personally can say that this is definitely the nicest Skyloom I have seen and while it's not amazing stock it is pretty damn good it is ranking it up to pre-built uh, rank when ranking it against other Builds roughly in this in this price range, I'd say that this one definitely is you know holding its own with the rest of them because I mean I don't like to give absolute scores or say this one is better than that one, but it quality wise stock for a lot of people I think they're gonna be very happy with it because I mean well. Space bar isn't perfect, that can easily be fixed. The rest of the stabilizers sound nice and clean. Uh, the switches that they include, though they're not lubed, they don't have any spring ping, so not surprising. Um, and it doesn't have any audible ping uh, to speak of. I mean, there is tiny amount if you put it against your ear uh, because of the steel plate, would be my guess. Anyway, um, I actually, I like this this keyboard. Out of all the 75%, this one's definitely up there. Um, because, I mean, it's roughly, they're all in the same price range, but it having that extra feature, and again, being a keyboard that I don't believe I've seen before, making me think that Skyloom is the actual company that made it, and they white labeled it out to other companies as far as other models, because I'm sure, you know. Anyway. I um it I think it's unique with the dual knobs. It does. It's it just <laughs> I can't help it. It really it it really reminds me of an etch a sketch. But um, I could see myself programming it and making it useful. As I I mean I use the knob for volume absolutely all the time. I I though I do want to. Do a few little changes to it, especially the keycap set. Now my wife likes it, so maybe I will. Um, <laughs> I will switch her botanical out for this keycap set and see if she likes it. Then I don't know. She probably does. Like I said, uh, my wife's the one that's got the design, the taste, the flavor. I'm I'm just a technical guy. You know, I know what I like, but it's hard for me to. I mean, it's just. Uh, it doesn't take much. Nice, clean, classy, like a, a white on black. That's just a, you know, it's just clean and classy. And it, uh, it's pleasing aesthetically. It's clean. And it practically works with any other color because, you know, it's black and white. So, and because this is a new design, not only with the, or at least new to me, with the uh, hot swap knobs, dual purpose sockets. But because, like I said, I usually use the bottom of a case to not only can I, you know, tell the same models, but also the same manufacturers across different models because there's similarities that you can just see. Now, Skyloom, I for a while thought maybe they were white labeling it from another manufacturer, but now I'm more and more thinking that they're creating their own. Who knows? Maybe it's time passes we will find out um, I actually was just asked today is Skyloom and Gamma K the same company and I mean I just want to look up their addresses and 
they're not in the same district. They're both at Shenzhen, but they're not in the same district. So I don't believe they're the same company. And Epo Maker and Akko are not the same company also. Um, Epo Maker does not appear to do anything but purchase white label models that, that I or anyone else have found. It doesn't appear they have their own keyboard, you know, like a keyboard that only they've released. You know, all the keyboards that they release have other vendors. Anyway, <laughs> coming back to topic. This is an interesting 75%. Like I said, the new features, I'm definitely going to move this up on my list of not only opening it up just to see about this light gasket system and see how they implemented it, but also uh, had a few little mods and, and change out the switches and the keycaps. I do love the finish of it, the lines, they're, they're nice and clean, but that's always been Skyling. I mean, they got the, the three ways with the cable. I mean, okay, but I do like that they have the pocket for the 2.4. You got two feet for a total of three angles. So, I mean, I, like I said, it, it definitely holds its own. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the Fecker IK75. I think that one was definitely the reigning 75% for a while. And I'm not saying this one's taking it out or making that one obsolete, but this one feels a lot more solid and it's roughly the same price of a Fecker. Um, although, yes, they have been on sale. Now, granted, I know there's a Fecker with QMK, so that's, that's not a fair fight. But this one would definitely, or for me anyway, it's one that I think it's, it's a good investment. It has a good value proposition. sounds decent stock. It has some decent switches um, that, although no, not lubricated, uh, they do sound good. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this GK75, and I'm glad that I finally got a chance to take a look at it. Um, and I think you guys will agree that it sounds pretty decent stock. Obviously, it could use a little bit of work, but it, it really doesn't take much. Um, I may come back to it after just tuning the stabs before opening it and do the switches and the keycaps before I go into modding it because... I really think it's it's that decent stock. It, it's uh, it's pretty good. Anyway, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>